And welcome to Lovin's Reads Lovecraft 51. I think that's the number. So, here's uh, some wire sculptures I brought over today. I'll hang them up there in the rafters. This is a video series that no one watches. But I do it because I want to read every single word that H.P. Lovecraft ever published. Alright. Uh, starting with uh, fin finishing up with the temple. Not finishing up. Continuing on. Still got a couple pages. Page 96. The next day I ascended to the conning tower and commenced the customary searchlight explorations. Northward, the view was much the same as it had been all the four days since we had sighted the bottom, but I perceived that the drifting of the U-29 was less rapid. As I swung the beam around to the south, I noticed that the ocean floor ahead fell away in a marked declivity and bore curiously regular blocks of stone in certain places, disposed as if in accordance with definite patterns. The boat did not at once descend to match the greater ocean depth, so I was soon forced to adjust the searchlight to cast a sharply downward beam. Owing to the abruptness of the change, a wire was disconnected, which necessitated a delay of many minutes for repairs, but at length the light streamed on again, flooding the marine valley below me. I am not given to emotion of any kind, but my amazement was very great when I saw what lay revealed in that electrical glow, and yet as one reared in the best coulter of Prussia, I should not have been amazed, for geology and tradition alike tell us of great transpositions in oceanic and continental areas. What I saw was an extended and elaborate array of ruined edifices all of magnificent though unclassified architecture and in various stages of preservation. Most appear to be of marble, gleaming whitely in the rays of the searchlight, and the general plan was of a large city at the bottom of a narrow valley with numerous isolated temples and villas on the steep slopes above. Roofs were fallen and columns were broken but there still remained an air of immor immemorial ancient splendor which nothing could efface. But there still remained an air of immemorial ancient splendor which nothing could efface. Confronted at last with the Atlantis, I had formerly deemed largely a myth, I was the most eager of explorers. At the bottom of that valley a river once had flowed. For as I examined the scene more closely, I beheld the remains of stone and marble bridges and seawalls and terraces and embankments, once verdant and beautiful. In my enthusiasm, I became nearly as idiotic and sentimental as poor Cleanse, and was very tardy in noticing that the southward current had seized at last, allowing the U-29 to settle slowly down upon the sunken city as an aeroplane settles upon a town of the upper earth. I was slow, too, in realizing that the school of unusual dolphins had vanished. Well, that's enough for today. Thanks. Here's another great thing. Important. Starting Monday, 5-9, ESS is having all of the floors in the building restored. A sealer is going to be applied, which needs... 24 hours to dry. During these 24 hours, there will be no access to that particular floor being worked on. Below is an estimated list of dates when each floor will be worked on. Okay, so I can't come here Thursday, May 12th. <laughs> oh, how hideous. No smoking. In case of fire, use stairway for exit. Do not use elevator. Okay, gotcha.